Welcome to the Queen Divas, Queens of Fitness podcast. Join your hosts, three-time WBFF world champions and WBFF royalty, Alicia Gowans and Stephanie Ayala McHugh, as we explore all things female health, training, competing, mindset, and living the fitness life every day. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of the Queen Divas podcast with my beautiful co-host, Stephanie Ayala McHugh. Hello, everyone. Ali, it's so good to see you. And I feel like it's been a couple weeks already. And guys, uh, we're trying to get back onto these little, little back onto the, you know, rhythm of- More frequent, regular. Yeah. And I think, you know what, if we think about this, today's episode and topic is pretty fitting because one of the main reasons that, you know, sometimes we don't get the chance to do it is because we've got so much chaos going on, both in, you know, life, business, prep land, you know, roadshow tours, like, a lot of stuff going on. So Steph sort of raised this with me a few weeks back that, hey, you know what, maybe stress would be a great topic. And (laughs) today's topic is now being brought to you to discuss, we're going to be discussing all things behind stress, you know, the science behind it, how it affects the physical and mental health, um, and just really how we can better manage it, treat it and prevent it. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Stress has been kicking my ass lately. And I feel <laughs> like this has really been, like I told Ali, I'm like, let's just, just, you know, coordinate something, um, you know, throughout the weeks, whenever we can, we've been literally trying to hop on these um, as best as we can. We obviously haven't done as good as we did in the first beginning, but now we'll just kind of get back on. We've been super hectic. Ali's been flying. We've been flying. We've just been, you know, diving into more business and with business comes a lot of you know pain stress as well as you know like less you time and with that also kind of affects your mental state right which I feel that also um, is the reason why I feel this topic is so needed because stress is really something that everyone deals with differently and it's really like we feel like stress kills us but it really isn't stress that kills us it's really how we react to it and how we manage it so that's what we'll be definitely discussing and digging a little deeper. Hundred percent. And I think, look, one of the biggest things that we should probably start with is the fact that you know stress is a really natural response. It's a necessary response, even to the to the challenges and demands we have in life. And not all stress is bad. You know, like having what we call you stress, which is a good level of stress, and you being EU, not Y O U. You stress is a really good level of stress, and. That level of stress can help us to actually, you know, it can motivate us to actually perform better and achieve our goals, driving us, you know, with a little bit more focus towards something. But then we get into the case of, you know, some not so good stress. And when it becomes chronic or overwhelming, that's when it can actually start to have detrimental effects on our health and well-being. And so, you know, it's important to sort of just caveat that and say, not all stress is bad. We definitely need an element of it, but we, but then there's this point that you reach and it's like a crescendo that is just where, you know, it's not so so great anymore. Right. Um, And we all have those moments. So don't feel like if you're sinking at the moment, because we we all sink and swim at different stages in life um, that you're alone or that there's something wrong with you. You're not. Uh, It definitely happens to the very best of people frequently. And sometimes, you know, more often than we'd like to admit. And for people like me, I sometimes have these moments where I'm like, you know, I don't think I'm stressed. <laughs> I really don't oh, think, I think I'm fine. Denial. And I look at my denial data stage. and my data's like, bum, bum. Like Ali's oh, got just your heart rate, rate, woman. It's like your heart rate's through the roof. Yeah, you can feel that she's elevated. Exactly. Like, (laughs) come on. No, I'm not stressed. What are you talking about? It's like the same reaction I think we all have when we have that denial state. Uh, We definitely all deal with that. Like Ali said, it's it's normal, but we all have to learn when is too much. Yeah. And, you know, when is enough, right? Because um, there's a, a balancing state. I feel like this is like that area where we have to find, um, you know, what is, what is some, something I can actually manage and something that becomes unmanageable. And I feel like that's just the question we have to ask ourselves is um, what is causing the stress? Is it physical or is it, you know, emotional? Is it something that is coming out, you know, through my life? I don't know, relationships. Um, is it at work? Like, where is the stress coming from? And I think that that's also something to find the root of the problem. So then know how to manage that. Yeah. And so I guess for everyone listening, you know, firstly, let's probably go a little bit into understanding stress and how it can affect us because stress is the body's response to any demand or challenge. 
When we perceive a threat or a challenge, basically our central nervous system, our sympathetic nervous system gets activated, which triggers the release of stress hormones such as adrenaline and cortisol. These hormones prepare the body to be perceived in a you know threat so that's where we get the fight or flight anyone that's listening to this has probably heard this term the fight or flight you know mechanism and it's literally being something that and this is why stress is super important it's protected us right we wouldn't we still be alive as a human race if we didn't actually have this because we wouldn't know when instinctively to run from something like a dinosaur or you know stay and fight for our turf if someone was trying to take it over Whatever the the you know the side of the coin is, which is where Steph was coming from earlier, it's not necessarily the stress; it's how you respond to it that will kill you, right? So if you're in a, and I've talked about this actually in previous episodes, you guys would have remembered this when I'm talking about my chronic pain journey with my back. It was like living inside of a house that had a fire alarm that kept going off because that was my flight mechanism, right? My sympathetic nervous system was so highly activated that that whole alarm system was on and I was living inside of a building with an alarm blaring 24-7 for years. (laughs) So that can that can actually be a really great analogy for you to think about when you think about, you know, the fight or flight mechanism and what, what it looks like when that sympathetic system is really on and stuck on for some people in a chronic well, state. What, yeah, and one thing that I really want to, you know, touch on because when we're in chronic stress, we don't realize how much our gut actually gets affected. Yeah, 100%. Us, how our digestion goes, like actually changes our gut bacteria, right? Like you're going to actually have some maybe stomach pain, some bloating, digestion issues, and you you struggle with this, you might be looking at having too high of elevated cortisol levels. Obviously, it's going to mess with your adrenaline and cortisol hormones, which will then lead to weight gain, um, which then also, also has trouble sleeping. I don't know if anyone has that issue. For me, it was also a problem um, when I have high elevated cortisol levels my sleep is shit. Like it is so bad. I can't fall asleep. Like you have that hyper focus on your tasks, the things that you need to do. Oh, I didn't get this done. And like you start overthinking. And when you have that overwhelming sensation at night, your sleep is just going to be interrupted. You're not going to sleep well. You're going to toss and turn. So definitely having, you know, those episodes, I think it's very important to kind of dive in too to dissect it is my high stress there. Um, Your increased heart rate. I think this also really comes from too much caffeine. Um, (laughs) Which is why I do my detox. Anyone's (laughs) following me, I'm currently on day 15. No coffee. How are you feeling actually? on Fantastic. My sleep is freaking amazing. Like in all honesty, this was definitely the best thing I could have done because I do it regularly, sort of like twice a year. I do a complete caffeine detox for at least a month. And I find one of the first things that happens is I get crippling migraines and really bad, you know, withdrawals for about two withdrawals. Three days. Yeah. Yep, real bad. And then after that, I kind of just start feeling better. And now I'm actually going to sleep faster, staying asleep longer, waking up refreshed literally an hour, an hour and a half earlier than what I was and dragging myself out of bed before. So that's amazing. Definitely could be something to look at if you're in a really chronic state that you're not necessarily. Mm just relying on caffeine to get through but I tell you what something really interesting which um might be super interesting for people listening to this well first of all let me just say this apart from it having effect stress having an effect on things like weight loss and all the things Steph just mentioned it also can be you know a lead um, contributor to heart disease depression anxiety and also immune system disorders but what I found fascinating was that research and literature shows that chronic stress can actually affect the brain structure and function. How full on is that? It leads to memory problems, cognitive impairment, and it even has shrinkage of the brain's prefrontal cortex, which is our complete little zone that is responsible for decision-making, problem-solving, and impulse control. So if you're someone that does just crazy- That's why you can't be clearly. A (laughs) hundred percent, right? So- You know, this is the when you see people have those knee jerk reactions and those really outside the box personality explosions. Maybe, just maybe, they're at the they're (laughs) at the you know receiving end of this prefrontal cortex change. But how cool is that? Like, what the hell? And I was reading something else as well on the epigenetic side, which is where you know chronic straight chronic stress over time actually changes your gene expression, irrespective of your DNA sequence. Surely. I I believe it because I feel like with stress, it's also like a reflection of a negative 
you know, environment, not just, yeah. you know, with um, a mindset, I think, of course, that has a lot to do with it, but like your actual surroundings and that negative effect then also creates this anxiety, this anxiety, and then this also stress factor just goes up and it just stays elevated and you get yeah. normalized and, you know, obviously thinking this is something, how you live by. And like you said, I feel like then your, their gene could be, you yeah. know, obviously kind of different. I mean, I, I totally see that. It's true. I mean, and it's crazy. I'm like, holy moly I can't get over for me that. the biggest mind-blowing thing is the digestion part or like just the way it changes your organs for me like liver produces extra blood sugars whenever you're obviously yeah. higher in stress levels it increases your risk of diabetes and the risk you know obviously of that is extremely high for a lot of us with our diet needs having to be you know something we don't really really just pay attention to I think that this is another thing when we look at stress we under eat we chronically diet as well mm -hmm. so we're chronically dieting and then we're chronically stressed. Yep, so correct. it's just like two freaking big flames to make a massive fire. So I think that that's just another thing, like you downregulate your digestive system and it's already being downregulated through your hormones and your cortisol levels being elevated. Um, so overall for me, I think that's just like where I get most mind blown is how it really down, like just the trip, trickle effect, right? Like yes, from your organs to the gut. And then like, it's all from stress. Like yeah. what? it's I mean, mind blowing. I've Nervous heard system heard that part. saying, um, you know, you work, you, you're a workaholic, you're working too hard. You're going to end up giving yourself a heart attack. There's actually, there's actually some pretty good correlation to this though. Yes. And studies have shown there's an absolute complete link to actual chronic stress and the development of, you know, cardiovascular diseases. So mm -hmm. including hypertension and heart attack and stress. Okay guys. Strokes. Like, like yeah, imagine yeah. that. Imagine yeah. giving yourself a stroke because you just literally don't it identify, happens. observe, oh, express, and manage it. This is happening on a daily basis. And I like have to address even here. This gets even more personal for me, but even like my mother, my mother has just been a very high stress woman her whole life, always caring for others. Just and I feel like with the high stress, you're always just thinking of other people rather than yourself. And like, yes, you're thinking of yourself, but you're thinking of so many other things um, that affect, you know, obviously how you respond to your stress, yeah. which then keeps you in this elevated state. So, like for her, she actually deals with high blood pressure and has really, really, you know, obviously just bad anxiety. She doesn't accept it. She's in denial. She just refuses to accept that she is, is you know, in an anxious yeah. state. But I like yeah. literally can monitor her and see all the symptoms from even that, you know, having the shaky yeah. type of, you know, um, just elevated heart rate. You can see it in their palms of their hands, or that's of course a very, very, you know, severe state because yeah. this has been years. My mother is, you know, 65. So it's definitely one of those things where it's more important to pay attention to, because if I can do everything to reduce those stress levels yeah. internally, you know, through her diet, through exercise, which are things that we'll definitely kind of touch base yeah. on is how we can kind of almost reverse this hypertension mm -hmm. that she's and you know what with. will be really interesting for you to witness with mum as she's getting a little bit older too we'll be looking at um memory loss because they've actually shown that high level high levels of the stress hormone cortisol getting released over chronic periods of time due to stress significantly affects the structure and function of the hippocampus and that is a brain region crucial for memory and learning so when you start getting forgetfulness you start getting that brain fog it might not necessarily be you know what you think it is it could actually be an indicator of hey you know what idiot knock knock you're actually stressed like i know you think yep. you're not but here we go here's some signs about right. that off long term it's that long it's just fascinates me the changes in the brain as a whole but um in particular some of these regions where you know like I said where we're getting predispositions in to having these longer term ramifications like the memory loss the um you know changes in the prefrontal cortex the, and then when we talked about the epigenetics before some of the things that this can lead to so these stress related changes and influences on the gene expression actually lead to epigenetic modifications that are linked to mental health people mm. so how full-on is that this is 100 disorder too, just because it doesn't mean necessarily every mental you know disorder case has maybe high levels of stress but if you really think of you know building that and i think that we're so susceptible to you know build something with our immune our autoimmune system that it really is something like you said genes can be obviously changed 
from right. chronic stress. Um, I do believe that having, again, high levels of stress also goes into your skin and how that also translates, you know, through yeah. your nervous system, through, of course, how yeah. your, your liver and your kidneys and everything being affected. You're going to maybe even have some eczema, have some psoriasis. These are yeah. things that we've been able to really kind of link from all oh, guys, stress crazy it's ridiculous that this is what is killing us from the inside out like literally um and trying to address it and try, how do we reduce the stress right like that's I guess the main question um yeah. some people will do it with exercise which is definitely another stressor that we have to kind yeah. of come to terms adding yeah, stress because that's body. still stressing yeah. you right and adding to yeah. your cup so maybe sometimes if your cup is already overflowing stress might not be the immediate thing you, um, sorry yeah. exercise might not be the immediate thing you do because it's going to add more stress but i think starting first and foremost i think the number one thing which is what you identified earlier um rate it for in fact right out of the gate of today's podcast you mentioned identifying your triggers like yes. that is your number one thing. It's like taking the time to actually reflect on, okay, what's my situation? Who are the people involved? What's my environment? What events that consistently keep turning up or are the common denominator when I get to the point of burnout, crash, actual admission that I am experiencing on some level stress, right? What are the common denominators? What are these, you know, what are these, what's the fabric here that's bringing it all together? Because identifying that is going to be the starting point and the key then to where you go to next. So um, Steph, tell us a little bit about maybe something that you've identified over the years that might be a personal stress trigger for you. Yeah, Just to give people some context here on what it looks like. Right, right. You know, so I think one of the bigger things that, you know, can really stress someone out is, you know, overall, I think everyone with their business, if they're an entrepreneur, right? Like that's just one stress that everyone can probably relate to if they have their own business or they've started something and we're like, man, I don't know what I'm getting myself into. And this is, this is a lot. This is just a one man job. And then it becomes a two man job. And then yep. of course, managing other people and having, you know, a team, you just kind of then start getting these high levels of stress that you weren't used to. Like you're yep. used to operations, but for a company, right? Like at the end of the day, yes, you, you managed and you had to do, you know, obviously some GM work, but it wasn't your company, right? Like, so it's not like at the end of the day, it's really going to matter if you, you know, don't do a hundred percent. You, there is no turn off. And I think this is where, where, where uh, I struggle, right? Like, I, I think I struggle a lot in the turning off mode. And because of that, my stress actually increased and accumulated and this is actually this is the topic today like yep. it kind of hit a reaching point yep. that like, this boiling point has now yeah it hit his limit and I had to recognize where is this coming from and I would I was in denial <laughs> I was totally in denial I'm like man I just I just don't know where that's coming it's not I, how I did it turn it, up for yeah. you was it just the sleep initially, like the sleep issues initially, or like how did you? Uh, you no, know, I prioritize yeah. sleep so much that because because we know obviously yeah. the the pinnacle and obviously just how important it is, and I just I can't I can't man I just can't function man <laughs> if I don't have <laughs> enough sleep. She's like you already um, know I'm not a morning person, Ellie. Jesus, don't know. I mean, no, seriously, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> so anyway, the um no, it wasn't really so much of the sleep as much as it was. Um, it was falling asleep and not being able to shut off like that yeah. shut off mode. I can't actually stop what's wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Something is wrong if I can't actually take a break. Like there is something that is keeping me in this high alert state that constantly, and this is this is again, if someone can relate to this, you then feel like it's still not enough. This yeah. is ridiculous. You do so much, and then it's like, but yet. There's so much. Could still more. do more. Yeah, yeah. And that then creates this extra stress that you're not okay. You're stressing about the future that's not even there. Let me tell you exactly. that. So then you're stressing on shit that hasn't even happened. Yeah. You don't know how the outcome is going to be. But so then you know, about- the way I always term this <laughs> whenever I'm talking to someone is it's imagining your brain has too many tabs open. Like how oh, slow yeah. your system runs once you've got all these totally. out, good, good analogy. too much yeah. shit on your phone and all your all your screens are still there. Like close the tabs down. open. They don't shut down. They don't close out. It's just 
you're running you're running about 50 programs all at once and you're trying to be effective at one thing but you're trying to do yeah that's exactly what it looks like that is a hundred percent how it's i would be just you're trying to do you know obviously yeah. some too some many tabs writing too many things at once and you're trying to be it all and do it all and we have to take a step back and yeah. realize that maybe what we've done is enough and it's okay you know, to maybe go a little slower because the pace that you were taking was gassing you out. And I feel like that's essentially what I really did in some aspects that the gas out within and, and this through all of the competitions in the mix of this, yeah, right? Exactly. Then just yeah, exactly. never really shutting off because I never really could. Yeah. I was competing from back to back. It's been like literally nonstop aligned with my business. So yes, growing pains with that, I always kept telling myself, stress is good stress. You know, this is good stress and there's nothing wrong with this. Like being busy, <laughs> good, busy, you know, there's again, I'm blessed. There's, and I was always extremely, you know, with this gratitude mindset, but yeah. at the same time, I was burning myself out to the point yeah. that again, I just was not really filling my myself back up yeah. and um, yeah. got to the point that it really honestly just started affecting me more internally, like more just mindset. And then just again, going into that feeling of, is this really not enough yet? Like it's truly getting to a point that yeah, where you have like, to realize, yeah, yeah, this is, not this is, yeah. yeah, this is more internal for me now. So it was not even a physical or, you know, psych, you know, I'm sorry, a physiological effect. It was more a psychological effect. And then yeah. that burnout feeling and really, uh, I guess this year, it just kind of hit that boiling point because then again, having to kind of give that announcement and then I really couldn't let that sink in and I was still just being super busy and kind of really then realizing, you know what, guys, it came down to social media. A lot of the times I would feel that anxiety and that stress build up. And that was actually one of the areas where I found I had to step back. And I talked about this on one of the episodes yeah, at the beginning of the year, I had to take a break because I just, I was just overwhelmed. It was just something I'm like, I, I, I'm not happy being on here right now. This makes me sour. <laughs> this definitely is something where I'm like, oh, this is a burden and I don't have to, why do I have to feel like I have to be here? Like yeah. I have to yeah. show up for what? Like, again, to show up for myself first, right? Yeah. And we ask ourselves that, are you really showing up to social media? And this is a, obviously a different topic, but are you showing up because you think you have to? Or yeah, are you showing because you want, because you to. want to? Yeah, exactly. And that is just a question that I really then had to ask myself. And then it just started getting better. And then I'm like, you know what? This is now I just have to <laughs> get back to work. <laughs> Honestly, now yeah, my it's very better. It's rested. actually really, it's actually really good how you talked about that because okay, I guess we could throw in the last two weeks for me. I had a situation where we got some news. It wasn't what we were expecting. Um, you know, I had to go through some personal stuff and I had to have a procedure done. I couldn't train for a week. Like all these mm -hmm. things that would normally be my stress relievers that I couldn't use. Um, and I'm the same as you. So social media for me for the last two weeks has been meh, you know, like I've really not really been, I've been haphazardly present my posts have been pretty average. I'm like, you know, my engagement's lower <laughs> like, because of it. Like, <laughs> do I really care? No. Um, and this was the thing. My response was the same as yours. I'll internalize. I'll step back. I won't necessarily be as present because I'm actually dealing with the things that are actually causing me stress and I'm, I'm work, I'm processing it. I'm working my way through it. So I'm re raising that for two reasons, because it's showing you that stress hits everyone differently we all respond differently in Steph and Mai's case which is probably why we're best mates we we actually respond quite similarly but that doesn't mean most people would right I've been on a coffee detox not drinking alcohol like I'm and I'm still on a diet plan right I know most people that would have dealt with what I've just gone through and gone and eaten all the pantry drunk all the wine probably done some <laughs> drugs like I'm, I'm telling you now yeah, I know they would have out. and that's just not my path it's not the way I've responded is there anything wrong particularly with the way anyone responds look as long as they're not doing self-harm or harming others each to their own I really don't care I have no judgment but my point here is is that we all do respond differently and it does come down to I guess our level of self-awareness and also our level of trauma perhaps maybe I want to throw in there and whether or not we've been self-healed as to whether or not we're going to either nurture ourselves through stress or we're going to self-destruct and numb ourselves through stress there's kind of that's what I see is yeah it and, is it's hard 
hard because you know it really there. is it really is and this sort of stuff is probably one of the main reasons I went into the study that I'm currently doing because a I think there's a big gap for it and b you know looking at some of the modalities that can be applied actually to support people through really highly stressful and overwhelming periods in their life that's yeah. definitely something that I'm interested in right so oh, man. I'm interested yeah. to just keep following your journey on it because it's it's something that we all need to learn how to you know yeah. what, what is it and how do we cope with it and how do we manage it because this is the thing yeah. are you coping or are you yeah. reducing the stress levels if you're just coping with the stress levels that you currently have that just means that you're in a way, you know, kind of, uh, okay, I, I can juggle it. I'm, I'm, I'm here. Right. Like this is, yeah. this is me. This is me. Right. With the head above water, like they're, <laughs> I'm not making it. just trying um, to survive, just, just trying to make it. Yeah. Right. But are you actually reducing the stress levels where yeah. that lowers and that actually truly comes yeah. down to a place that is balanced, not where you're balancing, whether if you can breathe, (laughs) like actually trying to reduce it to where you're in control of, again, we can't control what happens in life by any means. There's no way that you can, you know, um, have any, any idea that that you'll lose your job or, you know, that you'll have a family member be ill or something that is just inevitable and you can't help what happens in life. Last Monday, not this Monday, just gone, but last Monday, we're driving home from an appointment we were in where I was having a procedure done, um, which meant I couldn't train for the week. So we get a phone call and it's my mother-in-law who's literally just been held at gunpoint by a rifle to her, you know, abdomen by a junkie that's just stolen their car, right? Like it was unbelievable. He turns up at a house and does this. So we've just gone through what we've just gone through. We're in the car and we're sort of discussing our situation and processing things and then we get that phone call and it's like, holy shit. All right. What do we do with this? You know? So you're so right. We couldn't control what was happening to us. We couldn't control what happened to her. We're in two completely different States. Like you literally just have to control you and take care of you. Breathe. I I know that sounds so cheesy, but it is true. It is actually true. (laughs) It is actually true. And, um, you know, speaking of that, actually, one of the majors that I'm doing in my, you know, course is actually around mindfulness and it's a mindfulness based um, methodology and protocol that can be applied to stress reduction, trauma, a whole bunch of things. And there's actually been research showing the effectiveness of this particular protocol and it's actually gaining a fair bit of traction. And a lot of this is about looking at, um, you know, like incorporating, I guess, a few different modalities, but that whole concept of a meditative slash state and then breathing to totally, regulate the heart, the, the space, the stress. I just did a whole blog really on this. High. Like I, really, I was releasing it next week. So, so yeah, funny. Just really mind. high. So it this, is. so this is one whole, you know, little rabbit hole I'm going to go down in the study, but there's reasons for it. And look, you know, I think in those moments, all you really can do is stop, acknowledge whatever you're feeling, acknowledge whatever the situation is, control whatever variables you can control to support whoever is going through it. If it's not you yourself personally, and then it's literally taking a moment to stop, breathe, analyze, go internal, connect with body. You know, it will lower your heart rate. It will reduce the stress. It will completely turn the volume on that fire alarm right down to a quiet hum rather than a deafening roar. That's right. right. It's mm-hmm. not going to stop it. The stress is still there, but it's going to allow you to live in that space Ooh. without losing your goddamn mind. Clearly. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> you can think clearly when you actually breathe. And Breath. I feel like when you're breathing, that technique, and I, I, again, feel cheesy saying it, but that's the first thing I have to tell myself, Stephanie, breathe. Like, exactly. Breathe. Because exactly. the moment that you start feeling that overwhelming exactly feeling um of just stress rising and it's natural you get the you know clammy hands the sweaty palms and like you start getting that heart rate pick up and you just start actually panicking if you start panicking what happens you actually make an irrational decision You, you don't think clearly you think oh my gosh, what's the most, I guess, that quickest thing that comes to your head and it's probably not the best idea. So actually, <laughs> no, usually <laughs> right? not. 
Yeah. So how, if you have that kind of episode and then no, that's not a panic attack. It's just, again, something that's happening that you, you don't know what know. I always think yeah. about whenever I think about this, I think about, I have this memory because any, actually most people on this podcast probably won't know this, but I'm an, I was, I'm not at the moment because Christos is terrified of sharks. Let me digress for one second. Like really? literally terrified to the point where we go to the beach, if he goes deeper than his knees, he, he <laughs> almost combusts into a little ball of smoke because he's terrified the <laughs> shark's going to come get him, right? So now I was an avid diver. I would go diving from Mon- from Friday afternoon through to Monday morning on a boat. I'd do night dives. I've done my rescue medic. I'm like, I've, do- I've logged a lot of dives. I've dived in every even. country I've been to. <laughs> the rescue life. I love diving, right? I started this journey when I was in um, university and I literally didn't stop until I met Christos. And for the last 10 years, I have not di- I have not gone diving, which kind of semi-crushes my soul. But anyway, I will get back to it one day. He's terrified if I go out there, I'm going to be eaten. And with good I reason too. Let me, me and you can go diving. No worries. <laughs> so let me say this. This one time, this makes me think of this. This is the breathing always comes back to this. I get this vision. I am actually diving off of the coast of California. I must have been 21 at the time. And this is my first time diving with deep sea scalp, deep sea kelp. Like the really, it's like, it's what we call an underwater rainforest, right? It's like, it goes all the way down the bottom. We were quite deep and we're around this little rock. Anyway, (laughs) I'm diving with buddies and they were in the, they were actually um, ex-Navy SEALs. So they had the suits where they actually had their heads not in any kind of water with a speaking device. They could speak to each other. I was the only one that didn't have that. So anyway, they're talking to each other. And the next minute they're like motioning all these motions to me because we look above and there's all these seals. Now, what eats seals? seals are no, yeah, seals are not oh, as good. Right. <laughs> Sharks are around. Yeah. Next that is they are seeing these food. really massive shadows going in and around the kelp. Oh and God. I just started oh freaking out, right? Now, the worst thing is this. When you're that far down and you're that deep down, you can't just rise straight to the top or you'll get the bends. So you have to come up and sit at certain points for two, three minutes at that point, And you're just like a big sealy you know, piece of meat that you look like a shark you don't want to eat. And you're out and you're exposed and you're just like stuck. <laughs> right. So here I am having this moment. They're telling me I've got a surface. They got all of the signals and I know exactly what they're saying that there's a big bloody shark out here somewhere. And all I could see were these freaking shadows and my tank was nearly on empty. And I wasn't going straight to the top. So I had to literally in that moment stop myself and breathe and think about inhale hold longer exhale than an inhalation hold out and then back in and I had to do the full diaphragmatic breathing while under extreme stress I swear to god my heart rate's probably never been higher than it did in that freaking moment and four stops to get to the top (laughs) That's definitely probably the highest uh, heart rate I would have yeah. probably had to do. It was it, literally. Sure and then I'm as sure. we got to the top, we got onto the boat and it was sun setting, which we didn't even realize we'd lost track of time. Sun setting is also sunset and sunrise, by the way, for everyone that needs to know this is feeding time, frenzy time. And I'm in the middle of a bunch of seals. Like, what do you do? So we yeah, don't have yeah. seals in Australia. I don't have these things to worry about. It's only freaking over there. I right? just said my prayers <laughs> and just thank God for the life he gave yeah, me. I literally thought I was going to die. Honestly, I just thought I was this big <laughs> so anyway oh, yeah. that moment for me is what I always think about when I think of high pressure cooker need to bring my heart rate down need to actually de-stress I go right back to that moment in the middle of that freaking kelp oh, memory. thinking about the shadows <laughs> that were swimming past me that's... dying on the inside thinking that's it I'm gonna be ripped into three little pieces and I'm about to be shark food mm-hmm. like that's my start. So anyway, apparently once they bite us once, they just kind of split us out. <laughs> right. We just lost a leg. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't like our Could've been on stage with a bionic leg. Great. Um, but my point <laughs> is, is that the diaphragmatic breathing and the slow, that, that breathing that slows things down really does work. And I ended up getting to the surface, obviously clearly safely without being shark food and um, <laughs> live to tell the tale and remember it to this day. Um, it didn't stop me from diving at all. So again, when I think you have control over a situation that can leave you 
you know, you can, you can exit it and you can be negatively scarred for life, never return to that situation and avoid it forever. <laughs> or you can just literally learn some great solid foundations, like never, ever go diving at sunset near Cal and Seals. Yeah, I mean, um, maybe I think that's a good lesson. Uh, I think for <laughs> anyone listening out there that's going to plan on diving, take <laughs> do not go diving um, at sunset. I mean, I'm taking story. you down Breathing because- helps. I like, yeah, I like the uh, diving idea. I think that's just dope. Like, it's <laughs> something I, I will do with you. So we need let's to do this. Cabo. We will do this. You know what? I'll we'll do this go in the Cabo Bahamas. Cabo. Next, next time you come best. across to the Bahamas. Ooh, house, yes, you got me at Bahamas. <laughs> it's apparently beautiful there and I haven't got to go yet. So we will definitely do that. And then I think, you know, one of the other things that you can do when we're talking about um, the ways that you can practice relaxation techniques, it's not just down to breathing. Meditation is a great one. And meditation doesn't always have to be woohoo guru sitting with your legs crossed and your little, you know, pointy, pointy. Mm. Out there. <laughs> that. You don't have to be humming all sorts of pranayama. <laughs> Um, but you do need to be just focusing for a few solid minutes on something that is a singular point of context. So there's, there's a really easy thing to do, which for some people that find meditation hard, I think this is a really cool thing to do. Sit in the sun or sit somewhere where you're comfortable. Does not, you can lay if you want to, but sitting, I think is always, you know, pretty cool because you can do it anywhere and no one even needs to know you're actually meditating at the time you're doing this. Um, Put your focus on one particular point in the horizon and just literally look at and only take in everything about that one point. So yeah. you're focused on one thing. Yeah. That's literally a form of meditation. Nature. Yeah, I do this with nature. I like honestly just recommend for anybody to just literally step outside. Just yeah. It doesn't matter if it's cold, hot, like actually focusing on those things, focusing on the temperature being cold. How does your yeah. skin feel? Exactly. How does the breeze feel on your skin? You being present. And I know this sounds like, uh, again like again the, the but it's not it's, yeah kind of like it's spiritual stuff no um we're just really referring about you being aware yeah. being present with yourself yeah. and actually for me nature just brings this gratitude sensation and then just calms me yeah. so it, the sun or the trees or you know even as much freaking allergies I'm getting right now with the pollen in the air <laughs> the grass like it's 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 annoying with just my my sneezing and stuff but I can definitely tell you it's one of the things that makes me even more present if the more I start sneezing because I'm in or I'm like damn that's a lot of pollen out here and um just overall instead of being mad about it I'm like well this is seasons change and how seasons change and how do we react to those seasons like that's makes you start thinking of the feelings you get with every season yeah. And you start thinking of the grass being mowed and like, that's all like, we're in spring here now. And it's nothing but grass smells around. And it's like, what do you smell? What do you feel? What do you see? And all those things just make you again, calm because then you're yeah. almost being grateful that you have two arms, two legs, you know, that you can be it out gives you, um, just for that two minute. It gives you, you a know. way to be present without it being in some formal stiff you know, um, meditative practice. If you if you struggle with that, right? Yeah. It's, it's a different yeah. kind of connection. But I but I think that's a great example. So there's a few different options for you. There's a few different ways you can get that meditative response without actually having to feel like you need to be the next freaking you know Dalai Lama. You don't have to meditate. Um, You're not even into any of that. You don't have to of the stuff. Dalai Lama. We both know <laughs> how much I love my yoga, and I really, really do. So <laughs> yoga for me is incredibly. That was the quote. Awesome relaxation based and like for me yoga is just restorative and it really challenges me yoga is a great one I love it yes sit within myself and it really challenges me not to run from my shit but instead to process my shit so if that might be uncomfortable for you then you may not like yoga but I love it for that and so this last week, that's literally, I couldn't do formal training, but what I could do was um, some restorative based yoga. So where, where do you think I was for three, four of the day? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yoga class. Oh, you were, you were um, zinning. You're a zinning thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, um, on that note, I think for me, one of the other ones that really helps a lot. And if I can't train, which I always find, and this goes back to what we said, training is a great, good stress that we apply to the body. But if you are extremely yeah. chronic, stressed adding more stress physically is not good for you so anything that raises your heart rate elevates your heart rate or puts you in a high intensity state right even with you know strength training it does 
put a little more stress on our muscles. So then it takes more time to recover. It just adds a lot more stress for us to deal with. So with that being said, a low intensity mobility stretching session is fantastic because you really just are able to increase the oxygen that goes to the muscles, which then relaxes the muscles. You know, we usually have tense and cramped muscles when we're super stressed out too. We don't yeah, realize. Definitely can. Uh, I don't know if like stress neck. I don't know I was if you just guys have say, in your neck. Have you ever That's had a situation? Have you ever had a situation, Steph, where you haven't actually trained for some reason for a few days or maybe a week or maybe when you, you know, had your injury with your foot and then you have someone press on something somewhere completely unrelated and you're like, holy shit, that is so tight and Mm. I don't understand why my thoracic is not moving right now or my neck has wry neck because I haven't literally lifted a weight. But that literally is correct. Stress will be stored inside of the muscular and, you know, frame. So you will have those sorts of symptoms come up and it's like and, an accumulation of tension right, and that right. tension yep, here it is. then it's like man why do i have a headache if you'll even lead to some migraines yeah. if you kind of actually have this neck tension as well just because your muscles are extremely tight yeah. um which to me again stretching and doing some mobility like some foam rolling sessions yeah. some trigger point you know just yeah. release just really helps or if you want to go into some therapy and actually do some acupuncture yeah. or even do obviously something that is going to help alleviate which your you muscles you know tense um if you're having maybe those kind of symptoms if you know you aren't having a physiological kind of effect of like having stress too elevated and you can just go work out to me yeah work out oh yeah my my like I guess therapy is really being able to train and exert some of that stress out of my body by releasing it through yep. exertion. And I feel like people really undermined how powerful strength training or just exercise 100%. is to you know, reduce stress levels, reduce anxiety and cures depression, y'all, you know, it's the best. Oh, anti- absolutely. And it's just one of the things that if we use it as a tool, not as a, you know, burden, like we're just burning ourselves, like, you know, to the ground, because you're thinking training is the answer to get your, you know, physique or, you know, weight loss goal. It's more about using it as an outlet. And if you really think of it as therapy, right? Like that's my, my session to yeah. exert some of my anger or some of the stress, whatever emotional battles you may be having, even it's kind of almost being able to, you know, release that through the training and it helps tremendously. I think one of my favorite quote here, and I'm just going to mention it here because it's by the great Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I feel like he said the best and, you know, training gives us an outlet for suppressed energies created by stress and thus tones the spirit just as exercise conditions, the body. That's and exactly. I I love that. I find that is just so true. Yeah, so, so it's, yes, I, I mean, kudos to, you, you know, know the- for anyone listening to this, because if they want to geek out on it like I do, <laughs> it stimulates the release of endorphins. So it's literally like having a natural antidepressant, right? Every single time you move, no matter mm-hmm. what it is you're doing. So if you're having a down day, you're having an unmotivated day, literally one of the best things you can do is still turn up because what you'll find, now I was having this conversation with a client literally an hour before we got on this podcast recording where we were discussing the fact that motivation wanes and drivers and challenges in our life can often, you know, be a blanket that can squash the energy and the excitement and the motivation for something. But if you still throw the freaking blanket off and turn up, even if you think you're only into a 60% level session, nine times out of 10, what you end up finding is you get into it, your grit comes through and you end up having some of the best sessions you've ever had in your life. Oh, that's, like some oh, of the that's so true, man. Some of the best. And you walk out the of the time. gym, and you're like, <laughs> man, I feel so much better. Like my mood is so much better. Everything, I've got more energy for the rest of the day. Like it positively impacts you, even though you might have walked into there with a negative frame set about it initially. You will literally nine times out of ten walk out of there tenfold better than you walked in. Oh, yeah. So you should still turn up. And this is where we talk about habits and routines and rituals that you get yourself established in, so that when you have days where challenges are abundant and you are feeling like you're drowning taking those 30 minute sessions or 60 minute sessions whatever you can afford time wise for yourself to turn up and do those things still and tick those boxes and just you know focus on your health prioritizing and looking at it from a health perspective you're going to always walk out feeling so much better for it and you will 100% be contributing 
to reducing the likelihood of you having any of these diseases and comorb comorbidities that we've talked about. Like it's just going, it's like planting the seeds that you'll, you know, for your crop to harvest it later, right? Those little seeds you plant today, well, they're going to prevent you from having an illness later. So you want to always be thinking about everything you do today, even on the days you don't feel it. And even when you think, oh, I don't have time, it's rubbish. Mm -hmm. You actually do. You're just not prioritizing it. Still prioritize it. Still yes. stick to your habits, your routines, and your rituals. It, yes. If you still are sitting around, you know, worried, if you're worrying, if you have time to worry, you have time to go to the gym. Okay. If you have to, exactly. time literally to sit it's there and true. overthink and like overwhelm yourself with the future that hasn't yep. happened yet. Right. And just, I don't know what it is about the human mind that just, we, we try to assume we already know what's to happen, right? We like perceive that outcome. And then we yep. think of oh, what's going to go either this way or that way. And we just kind of like already, you know, either fail or succeed. And it's crazy. Like we won't do something unless we think we're going to be successful. And it's mind blowing to me that yeah, so yeah. many people be held back because they're just, oh, it's not going to work or it's going to take too much time. You know, it's just, you know, just not doable, whatever. You just build, build these false, you know, stories to yourself. And you think that you know the outcome. Oh no, I won't be successful because of this. You know, and like, I think that we need to really assess and just look at ourselves and ask, like, is it truly stress that's, you know, making me feel this way? Or is it overthinking? Because I felt I've had to ask myself that and multiple times. And it's like, is it actually, I'm stressing about stress and being stressed, if that makes sense. <laughs> like, yeah. what is wrong? Like, am I overthinking about being stressed? And I think yeah. I'm stressed myself out yeah. right and if that is you like that overthinker or just sitting there and just again perfections uh, often yeah, oh, oh, yeah, which we yeah. totally talked yeah. about it right um that is just one of the things that you have to release you actually have to go and insert and take action yeah. and start Great. thinking and it's one of the you know places that I find is our us time. It is your you time. It's your therapy. So if you haven't already made, you know, the efforts and I'm sure most of our listeners go to the gym and are at least, you know, doing some stuff already for themselves. But this is one of the rituals and routines that we have to create, you know, from day to day, if it's stress from work, stress from relationships, this is your, you away from all of that. This is yeah. your outlet. So and this I is think, um, to add to that, during complete times of, you know, because sometimes stress can make people completely shut down. Um, when that happens and you feel like, okay, I, well, I literally just can't fathom going and doing that resistance-based session, still move and focus on movement, but maybe just pivot and find a something that you really enjoy and that you find joy in. So it might be, you know, go and jump onto your friend's indoor soccer team and play a couple of games. Go and That's hike fast. through the Go hike yeah. through the mountains with your, you know, your partner or your girlfriend or your kids. Go surfing. Like do whatever it is that's really not in your maybe your routine per se normally, but still has you moving, still has you connected to yourself and detaches you from all of the overwhelming thoughts that are currently consuming you, but doesn't completely make you stagnant and a couch potato, right? So yeah. sometimes finding something that might be a little bit less intense or a little bit less, um, you know, I think restrictive, if you feel restricted to a, a gym, then that can also be something that might unlock in you a little bit of relaxation, right? Um, so yeah, just think about that. Think about it being something that maybe you just find joy in or something that a pursuit that you love. It might even be going to a dance class, like whatever it is, but just go do that for a little while. And then yeah. once you're back into the rhythm, get back into your normal routine, perhaps. Yeah. And for me, I also like to, if I ever have elevated you know, seasons or, you know, phases that it's kind of, again, maybe inevitable to have loads of like work. Like let's put mm -hmm. example that there's going to be seasons that there's just like no way around having less stress and you're going to have to navigate how can I manage reducing my stress levels? Yep. There's really no way around my life right now. This is work. There's the kids, there's, you know, my business or whatever you have all going on. And you might be even competing on top of that, you know, and trying to do other things as hobbies. So if that is you and you're like trying to actually reduce um, naturally your stress levels and cortisol levels, I personally like will actually take um, cortisol management, you know, to supplement some um, ashwagandha is a fantastic supplement that is out there that you can take plant-based and it really does 
help reduce your cortisol levels. I personally also take Calm, has great magnesium and actually has HTP purity, which is uh, also known in the Chinese uh, medicine world as a plant herb that helps uh, with anxiety with, you know, patients that usually deal with, you know, just having more overwhelming or higher state of anxiety. And that just is one of the things that to me, it just it becomes like a ritual. It's like a nightly ritual. I'll take my poem. I'll take my mashwagandha. I'll even mix in some mag- like extra magnesium in there to get some good sleep. Mm-hmm. And I think you, like you, for you, you've done yeah. like ZMAs, right? Like we we've talked ZMAs. about that. Yeah. And it's just really helpful because I am in that elevated state and I do need a little extra boost and I need some help and I can't really change my life all the time and you have to deal with what's at in front of you. So if you are in a place where you're needing maybe some supplementation, I always just recommend instead of taking an aid, um, which some people will resort to like just medication, um, just doing it naturally through, you know, with some, some plants and herbs, like to me, that's usually my go-to. And I think that's a really great segue into our fourth tip, which is adequate sleep, you know? So we've talked about identifying your stresses. We've talked about, you know, some of the relaxation elements that you can move into. We've talked about exercise and that's, you know, the impact that that and the role that it has on reducing stress, but also can be a contributor to stress, but going in on from that, getting enough sleep and getting adequate sleep. And we've done an entire segment on this. So, you know, you can always go back and find it. We delve really deep into the, parameters of sleep but literally if you have increased stress levels if you have high cortisol levels and if you are finding it really difficult you've got too many tabs open in the brain sleep is going to be challenging for you and you should be looking to get at least seven to nine hours nine hours for a lot of people they'd be listening to that and going shit that's three nights sleep for me (laughs) but we should be getting between seven and nine every single night listen here if you do not a minimum of eight hours, I will get on to you if you're one of my clients, because literally if that is yeah. you at six, if you are doing the four to six and that's normal to you, let me tell you, we're starting there. You need to improve your sleep yeah, right off the ground, like, no matter if you're not stressed out or not, you will just yeah. get so much better results in every aspect of life. Um, but also just knowing that all athletes or high stress level, you know, individuals need that actual recovery yeah. period for yep. you to function otherwise you have the brain zombie also mode. how the brain processes too so the brain you know has its little filing system that gets done during the night while you sleep and it detoxes and flushes and it cleanses itself during the night which is super important for your cognitive function your memory function like so many factors that you need day to day it's like it the, it's the brain closing things down, right? It needs to do that. If you've got too many tabs open and you're trying to get through your day, it's gonna you're going to struggle. But I guess to, to we don't want to go into it too much. We've done a whole segment on it. But quick pointers would be that, you know, keeping an established routine around your sleep. So trying to wake, you know, sleep and wake around the same time within an hour every single day, whether it's weekday or weekend is a great tip. Um, keeping blue light, you know, um, down the exposure, k- turning everything off the um, blue light. You can do the dimmers as, you know, things you can do with your phone. You can wear the glasses, um, trying not to be on screens past a certain point in time, trying to actually have a meal no later than the, you know, sunset or not much later than sunset from a circadian point of view, keeping it two, three hours away from sleep time, um, using, you know, music, using white noise, using meditation. For me personally, I just need to get into bed with my blue light glasses and read a physical book, a couple of chapters every single night before I go to sleep and I'm out like a light. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That one, anyone that's listening here, this, that's the key y'all. Like if it's not the TV, the TV will keep you up next episode. You're like on a cliffhanger and you're like trying to figure out what happens. So that's going to just keep you up. And then social media on your phone, as you know, it's just going to keep you scrolling. You'll just get addicted to whatever the trend of TikTok is happening and you're just literally going to continue watching video after video. So making sure that you're actually doing something that stimulates your brain, like Ali had even said the reading, that is my absolute go-to. If I know I need to create that routine and ritual, it's like just having that book next to your bed and it's going to allow you to really just, honestly, for me, it's a few sentences and I'm like, I'm done because (laughs) I the book will fall on my face. <laughs> I'm, I'm done, I'm done, done out, right? So, and actually, on that yeah. note, I don't know about you, but I'll, I'll just quickly caveat this. I cannot do any of my study close to bedtime because my brain oh, is no, just like, it's, boom, not. Ding, ding, it's more for fun. It's like, fun. let me read, you know, some thriller, horror, like completely oh, non-fiction, 
like just stick, complete escape stick stuff. Woman. <laughs> yeah, I know I am. I'm a complete cigar. All the gold. Oh my god. Um, mine is literally just very light and <laughs> romantic like, comedies. Yeah. <laughs> just, honestly, it's not even so much uh novels as much as it's me just honestly reading things anything like physical about the mindset, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, just actual book. Like it could take me forever to finish that book if it's the one by my my bed. If it's a book I'm actually trying to read or like, you know, I actually want to. <laughs> Yeah, uh, study, definitely away from the. From yeah, the I can't. I Not can't be next to the bed. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, no. I think that also another great nightly ritual besides the reading is just the power of being able to take a shower. People don't yeah. realize like a nice warm bath okay. and just being able to decompress your muscles, just feel clean and get yourself in bed. I think everyone just kind of can relate maybe to just yeah. having that refreshing feeling and then just being able to knock out. And hopefully by that point, you've taken, taken care of yourself. I feel like that just yeah. always reduces stress and maybe it creates more stress if things are, oh, I'm out of this, or, you know, maybe you didn't have certain things, but um, that's just another, you know, yeah. thing that we're having to realize are you actually creating more stress within your life because of the way you're reacting to your circumstances? Remember this guys, like it's, it's what, not what we're given to us. It's what we have. And that's what we have to use. Don't keep thinking of what you don't have. I feel like so many people, it's like, I don't have this or, you know, grass is greener on the other side, which then keeps you in this stressed, you know, position all the time thinking you don't have enough. Well, it just keeps you in a state of jealousy. You know, you really are living in a constant state of, well, actually, let's be politically correct here. It's actually a state of envy. It's when you're a state of enviousness, when you're actually in comparison to what someone has that you don't have, but you want, and you would prefer that you had it over them. That's actually a state of envy. And that's how most people operate. But it's, hey, it's a seven deadly sin for a reason, people. You don't want to do that. It's not good for you. It's not a good space. No, cut that shit out. <laughs> don't do that. Go to church. <laughs> no, I'm joking. None of that. Look, you are right. wrong. It's not going to, it's a comparison is a thief of all joy and all success because it holds you back and it doesn't unlock your true potential because you're too worried about someone else's. Like you really, yeah, don't want to live in that trap. But I think this does go into our next and final tip for how to, probably manage stress. And, and, you know, like this is probably again, another key part as to why I'm doing what I'm doing study wise, but it's, um, it's being able to talk to people is being able to seek out support. It's being able to encourage, you know, a safe space for conversation. Um, and to be able to be in a position where you're with someone you trust, if not a complete professional in the field, but where you have that capacity to share those stresses or those concerns and then communicate how you're feeling or not or not coping, you know, and maybe discuss um, potential strategies, um, discuss the way behaviors might need to change from the people that might be part of your triggers. It's yeah. being able to actually yeah. process through the stress rather than numb, avoid, and run from the stress is probably my key yeah. takeaway. Mm, I I love that because we can't do these things alone, guys. Oh God, no. Just like simmer and you know, obviously sit in all these emotions or stress that does end up killing us when we bottle it up. Can't bottle it up. You have to overcome it by again learning how to react to it rather than overreacting. Exactly. You know, taking moments breathing, calming yourself down, reassessing your situation, your emotions, you know, is it irrational? Is this actually something that needs to be done or is it something I want or does it, you know, is need? I think a want and a need, we have to uh, keep reminding ourselves that there's things that we think we need or think we want and we have to kind of assess which one, what is, um, what we're really doing here and go, go One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite sayings, and I've said this ever since I was a kid, actually, and I think it's probably something that one of my grandparents said to me, and it's just stuck with me forever. Um, a lot of the times we're in these chronic states of stress, and you touch on it with the comparison side of things, and it probably sits within that family of, of thinking, is that it's, we think we don't have enough yet, or we think we haven't attained a certain point, or we think that what we've been channeling our energy to our desires on 
that's what should come our way. That's what we're destined to do. And then it doesn't happen, right? And for whatever reason, something different happens or presents itself. It's a different path or if it's a different person or a different job or a different something, something different, different to the construct we painted in our minds of what world, the world would be and what our life would be, right? And right. at that point in time, we go into this spiral of overwhelming stress because we think that we're failing or that, you know, how could we possibly not get what we wanted, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I remember this saying that stuck with me ever since is that thank God for unanswered prayers because quite often when we have the situation where we don't get the one thing we thought we should get, if we view that the right way and we respond in the right way and we look for the silver lining and we find the learning or the lesson or the new opportunity or the new path, we're probably walking in a better direction and the one that was truly meant for us. And we get to the end and we get substantial more wealth and prosperity and joy from it but it's only if you're open to the fact that there's not just one path for you to walk there may be many and just because something doesn't go the way you think don't let that stress consume you and derail you instead try to look for what the new opportunity is providing you so I guess that's just something that stuck with me my whole life it's the way I view nearly freaking everything that happens in my life and it's probably the reason that people find me incredibly annoyingly optimistic but you know what I no, love sitting with that as my foundation. Hey, that's why we obviously get along so well. It's all about, you know, overcoming and being so positive in everything that we do. It's like, it's not why me, it's like, try me. Try me, attitude, yeah. Right? And all of that really resonates with your perspective. If yeah. you don't have the perspective of assessing your surroundings and actually ask what lesson am I supposed to learn from this? What yeah. am I actually supposed to gain out of this situation? Yeah. That is a hard life lesson, whether if it's, you know, having uh, illness or having some type of injury or maybe stressed out at work because there's just so much going on in your workspace. Um, maybe you're just really, really, you know, really overwhelmed with an emotional relationship and it's just something that's stressing you out and yeah. I don't know, you got a cheating husband or boyfriend oh, and gosh. all these things, right? Like that causes girl, I think like that to me when not obviously me, I'm blessed to have care. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah, as are. far as seeing what others have to go through and the yeah, stress 100%. that it causes. Like, I think that actually is, is one of the bigger also, you know, precursors as to self-sabotage and yep. all of the other things that, you know, just get affected from a, just a very, very bad relationship. But again, that's not something that's in your control, right? Like someone else no. is not in your control. So you just got to continue to remember yeah. that. And again, Thank God yeah. for unanswered prayers. Maybe he's showing you a better person somewhere else and you just got to hey, let that chapter hey, close. Yes. Right? So oh, yeah. you kind of got to look at it like that. But look, yeah. I guess to recap on this, we've we've identified that stress is a normal and natural and necessary response um, to our day-to-day -day challenges in life. And it's not something we can ever avoid. Everyone's going to have it. It's just the levels of it and how it impacts us and how it plays out for us individually varies, right? So when it becomes chronic or overwhelming, it can have detrimental effects on our health, well-being, physical well-being, and also our mental well-being. Um, and by identifying our stresses, applying relaxation techniques, practicing those, exercising, um, getting the right type of exercise, getting enough sleep, and then reaching out for support if you need it, we can better manage it treat it and even prevent it so taking care of your mental health people is absolutely essential you know so that's what today's hey, episode's what about we've been doing <laughs> we've been doing that lately you know we've been really focusing on reducing our stress levels managing what's on our plate and i hope anyone out there that has maybe stressed out maybe feeling overwhelmed or dealing with yeah. anything we talked about today has maybe felt a little sense of relief of knowing that you're not alone no you're not uh, there are a lot of things that you can be doing, you know, on your own to exactly. really reduce those levels and maybe yeah. just, you know, take a moment, take a break. It's okay to be off. No one is forcing you to do whatever you feel yeah. is, you know, an obligation. I mean, of course we all have obligations. We're all adults here, but we don't have to do the things that are maybe causing that stress. And if correct. We can eliminate them, get it out of yes. your life, and re-implement it, and yeah. you know, obviously learn how you can manage that back in. Absolutely. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I really love today's topic because, like I said, it was something we've I've been dealing with. I know yeah. Ellie 
has also been dealing with and hopefully you guys can also you know get some some yeah. tips just hopefully you can help. relate to some of what we said i hope you hope you found a bit of you know moments of funnies in some of the things we said and more mm. importantly i hope we gave you some tools and you know tricks to maybe help better manage your own but we'd love to hear from you. Please share this episode if you love it um, with, and especially share it with a friend or a family member that you think could really benefit from this one. Anyone that you know you've identified is probably struggling a little bit. Maybe they're a little bit like we get sometimes. They're actually stressed. They'll tell you they're not. They have no freaking clue, but really wow. they are. Send them this link. <laughs> and we look oh, forward yeah. to seeing and hearing from you. Be a good people. friend. Exactly. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks, Jay. All right. Yeah, see ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Queen Divas, Queens of Fitness podcast. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Queen Divas Pod, on Twitter at Queen Divas 4, and follow our hosts on Instagram, Alicia at Alicia Gowans underscore WBFF Pro, and Steph at Stephanie Ayala 7. See you all next week.